Hello guys, welcome back. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about what are data structures and by the end of this lecture, you will have a better understanding of the conceptual overview of data structures. We will be visiting the advantages of data structures and the types of data structures depending on the usage. So let's get started. So you will agree with me that we live in an information age where there is lots of data around us. So every time you use an application or you do something, you are creating data about yourself. For example, whenever you use Facebook, you create posts, you like, comment on Instagram, you do various set of other activities, posting stories, liking, commenting, visiting other profiles, etc. So you are creating data and data around you is not enough basically so if you are working for a software company only data is not enough but you should be able to process that particular data and derive the appropriate information for example if you have lots of data around likes you might want to understand the trends the insights around like so you have data but you need to process that data to derive the information. So let's say, for example, if you want to search for some information in an application and it has lots of data, you will be spending a lot of time searching through the application for relevant pieces of information. And this will lead to slowdown because since searching and finding relevant information is tough, it may use considerable amount of processor resources leading to an overall slowdown. Speed because searching and traversing through the huge set of information might slow down the overall process. And the other problem you might face is multi-search. So if your application serves multiple users at one point of time, it may lead to multiple concurrent requests, which may cause further slowdown. So this is where data structure comes in. So what is data structures? So data structure is simply a way to store and organize information appropriately so that it can be used efficiently. You can say a data structure is a systematic way of organizing and accessing data. The data that we stored can be literally anything. It could be thousands of positive whole numbers called integers in computer science, a catalog of ebook, a list of customer names, emails, or any other bits of data that you can think of or your application requires to store. Let me explain this with the help of an example. So let's say you are maintaining data in a traditional format of pen and paper, which consists of information of students. You keep entering record as and when students come. After a point in time, you will have several records, tens and thousands in numbers, which would be too difficult to handle. So every time you have to search for a student, you have to scan through the entire list one by one, which is tedious and not the right way to do. If you have to delete a student, then you have to again scan the entire list and delete the record once you find it. Same goes for editing as well. This is tedious and definitely not the most effective way to go about. Now let's say you now store these records of student in a sorted way and you have sorted this particular records in alphabetical order. So now if you have to search for any student the process will be much easier than the earlier one. It would be very easy for you to find the student record. Even editing and deleting the student information would be super easy. So this is how data structure adds value to your life as a software engineer. Data structure has several advantages. And the first advantage would be it allows you to process data in easier way or it allows easier processing of data. They allow efficient functioning of the computer program you implement since the data is stored in an efficient way. Data structure can be split into two categories, okay, based on how they can be accessed, okay. These two categories are linearly accessed and non-linearly accessed data structures. A linearly accessed data structure can be accessed sequentially by visiting each element in the array which is commonly referred to as a passover. So examples of linear data structure would be array, linked list, stack, and queue. 
A non-linearly data structure stores data in a sorted order where there exist relationships between the elements of data. Unlike linear structure, we can't access each bit of data sequentially here. Instead, traversal of non-linear structure requires advancing and backtracking over the bits of data. Example of non-linear data structure would include trees and graphs. However, this isn't the only property of data structures. We also need to look at how the data in them is stored in the memory. And again, we can categorize data structures into two parts based on how they can be stored. So earlier we did a categorization based on how they could be accessed. So this categorization is based on how they are stored. And again, they are categorized into two parts. One is linearly stored and non-linearly stored. Under linearly stored, we have array and under non-linearly stored, we have linked list. And other data structures like trees, graph, stack, and queue, it depends on the implementation on where they will be categorized. With linearly stored data structure, each element of data is stored consecutively in the memory. And this can be visualized like this. So if we have a data structure called array, and here are the elements of the array, 32, 8, 10, 152, 43, and so on. So this is how they'll be stored in the memory. So you can see that they're linearly stored and this is the memory location where they are stored. And the disadvantage of this is that at the end of the structure, there may be some wasted space that holds no data. Because if you have defined an array of size 10 and if you only store five values, so only five memory blocks will have that data and rest five would be empty. So that's the disadvantage here. There is some memory wasted in the end. With non-linearly stored data structures, the data is stored at random memory locations and each bit of data has a pointer to the memory location of the next. And sometimes it also has a pointer to the memory location of previous. And this can be visualized like this with the help of this diagram, which you can see on my screen. So we have similar data that we had in the previous slide, but here you have 32 and it points to the next node over here, which is eight. And then it points to the next element, which is 10, next element 152. So this way you are not only creating memory on the go. So let's say you have five elements to be stored. So you will only create five nodes and you will store only five elements here and rest five won't be created at all. And these five would be linked to each other with the help of a pointer. So this is how a non-linearly stored data structure is. And this is more efficient as the data is stored in the memory where there is free space. And this foregoes the issue of unutilized memory. However, as you may be able to imagine, this is more complicated to implement. So a structure can be linearly accessed and non-linearly stored. For example, a linked list consists of nodes. We will be covering linked list in more detail later. But for now, you can think of node as an object that stores a bit of data and has a pointer to the next node in the memory and nodes are stored non-linearly in the memory but are accessed linearly by sequentially visiting each node in the list. So to summarize, data structure can be categorized as linearly accessed and non-linearly accessed. Under linearly accessed, we have arrays, linked lists, stack and queues. Under non-linearly accessed, we have trees, graphs. And uh, also they can be categorized depending on how you store them. So arrays can be linearly stored and uh, linked lists are non-linearly stored, but stack, queues, trees, and graphs, it depends on the implementation, whether they are linearly stored or non-linearly stored. So let's summarize. So in this lecture, we understood the concept of data structures. We also took a look at the advantages of data structures and how our life would be without data structures. We also took a look at some of the categorization of data structures 
and this helped us cover the concept a little bit more in detail. So I hope you guys enjoyed this class and found it valuable. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.